relationship. AWS has traditionally been fairly self-serve. Are you adding more sort of human interface, human sales tactics to lure customers? And as you know, AWS reInvent is not a sales and marketing conference, it's a learning and education conference. And so Somewhat similar to columns in a relational database, except that you have that flexibility. You don't need to define them up front, and they can differ uh, across items in your table. And it's really due to this effect. So uh, if you look at the bottom, this is the technology adoption curve. We're all very familiar uh, with this. Uh, in the beginning, we have innovators running around solving a problem. A technology trigger has occurred, right? The data pressure is too high in the system. And that's all for today. As always, we look forward to your feedback. You can send us an email, a tweet, or you can leave a comment below. If you've got a question about anything I've shared today, please send it my way. I'll pick the best one each week. I'll share it in a What's New video. To see some more videos just like this, subscribe to our channel, click that bell for notifications. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you again soon. If you're going to be a leader that's going to reinvent, you have got to be maniacal and relentless, relentless and tenacious about getting to the truth. You have to know what competitors are doing in your space. You have to know what your customers think about your product. About it, you have to challenge people, often people who know a lot more about a subject than you do, but you've got to get to the truth. And then when you realize that there's something you have to reinvent and change, you have to have the courage to pick the company up and force them to change and move. I want to explain that why learning AWS is so frustrating. Really go to the subdomain, you really edit your uh, file into the JSON structure, then you really upload your all the Node.js, uh, all the JavaScript project into the Lambda, then really just uh, then really just uh, link the DynamoDB with the Lambda functions to in a certain cases. Then you really specify an IAM role for that even itself. Then you really just edit to the like it's such a ridiculous process. Like even right now, even I'm confused about what should I really do about it. I just want to really ask like why why don't you really just simplify the process? Well, the last video that I've made was in 2019 about AWS and why it is so frustrating to learn. But since then, nothing has changed really that much. And in today's video, I'm going to tell you and demonstrate how, how and why AWS sucks in particular aspect about in user development, how AWS documentation are terrible, how there is so much inconsistency in AWS document, uh, AWS SDKs and why and what AWS really needs to do to in order to cater all of this stuff. So before really moving further, who am I? It's like, hey, so my name is Rahul Aire and I'm and I'm self-taught developer. So I just trained myself to really know all the Mern stack from March 2019 to just, I finished everything about learning JavaScript in just seven months. But since then, after my 2020 went entirely focusing on just learning serverless, S3, DynamoDB, how Lambda works, how API Gateway works, what is the integration, watching endless other tons of shit like reInvent talks, which will come over later words. And my whole, experience with AWS isn't really great enough. Now, why is that? It's like, first of all, I would repeat that. Learning Mern stack, which is a pretty reasonable skill, you can learn it within three months. I, for me, it took me around four or five months to learn that. But learning AWS and serverless in general, it's like I've spent more than one year. And it's like up to right now, I'm really 90% confident right now. But still, sometimes it really bugs me about why isn't the documentation really straightforward? Why the learning resources are so scared? And what AWS is really actually trying to do? It's like the support system is really not that great. The support is like uh, when it comes to about documentation, it really pretty well, it terribly sucks. It doesn't really set the expectations so correctly that you, really, you don't get a correct idea about what it is, what are the limitations, because AWS really claims that they are so awesome. They are really just kind of, hey, we are the number one. We care about customer. We are customer obsessed. No, nothing in that. Because if you come over here, I will give you one example. Let's say if you come to the Udemy and if you searched for, let's say I would learn for serverless, you will see that there are 4,000 results. But when you actually you compare the reviews, there are so much less. But now you come to the React.js and let's type out the Let's search for any favorite instructor. You will get thousands of thousands of results. So 
when you see that the reserve when you compare those result those two those two results are really vast it's like the react is about skyrocketing the number of people learning uh, react js is much more higher and the number of people learning serverless is much more less now why is that aren't people really excited about serverless no it's not that case people are excited but the fact that aws is so complicated and it that they doesn't have any really good uh, documentation they doesn't have any good resources they don't invest in much about educating people it's like frankly aws really says that we are a like reinvent is a education but not a marketing conference but in fact it is a marketing conference you market about your services you market about the greatness you market about uh, like let's giving a freebies giving market about all of this stuff but not focusing on the clear aspect and why is it costing you so much and why is it costing the developers and today we are going to exactly discuss in detail as i really previously mentioned so moving on further if if you come over to the traversy medias this clip he clearly mentioned that aws is really complicated for him and a name like traverse media is really he heavily influential in the web dev and tech community out there so let's have a look up this year so aws is a, a very popular option for large scale projects it's used a lot in the big business world however i just think it's too it's it's overcomplicated and it's overkill for anything that i personally would build so i don't use aws all that much i use you know s3 buckets from time to time um but that's about it i definitely don't have a lot of experience hosting yeah uh, using it for hosting so you got my point about it and without wasting your time let's move on to the further one so let's take an example like if i want to learn about s3 right if i come over here i type out google and then i came up to write this search page so what i really do is i search as a newbie let's say i'm completely new i don't know anything about s3 so i have really finally come came over here which is a fairly good one so they have given me a two thing like why does this api reference is there what does this user guide really does as a newbie as a beginner i completely don't know. but let's take an example like this is saying me aws sdk and that's what i really want so come over here so step number one remember counting step number one user guide and then really what I need to do is, let's say I have a fair amount of experience in JavaScript. So what I really do is naturally I want to go to SDKs. So what I'll do is I will come over search type out here. Where is that? It's like it's giving me fair amount of instruction, fair amount of here, fair amount of there. So it's really like, let's type out and try to go up right here. Let's say uh, SDK. So it's really like, oh, you don't have any auto complete. It sucks. You know, I will show you about React where when they have really good auto compute over there. Uh, SDK is for Python, SDK is for Java. It's like where is the JavaScript? Okay, use SDK for JavaScript. Okay, okay. that is step number three, which I have done over here. It's like uh, that is AWS SDK. Step number four, which so you can come over here. Step number five, you can come over here. You can let's say uh, configure, let's say create and using step number six which is over there and finally if you come over here step number seven see how many step you are there and each step is adding multiple steps so imagine doing all of this thing to everything and especially and if you really notice one thing that there are so many details so many lists out there so as a beginner where should i begin let's say if i'm really big starting up new to the aws is there any clear guy documentation is there any clear stuff what i should do is there any clear like a limitation and uh, set bound like hey we don't do this thing we are not really good at this seek our other alternative solutions so if you come over to the react just documentation that i really want to show you one thing it's like that is let's count here from step number one that i've come over here step number two and as you can see there is clear the ui is really good the it's like the margin page is such a good enough I compared to your documentation let's say it is suck it sucks so bad if you come over here it's like so the documentation is absolutely terrible because here you come it's like there is no how do I really search over here there is is there any search bar oh yeah there is so like the styling and the staring is so pathetic man come on you can't even really do one styling 
and do one some CSS styling. Is that really hard to just type out some uh, width, a height, border, making a dark theme about here? I don't know. You might, you might, you AWS guys are really might expert, so you can comment on it. Let's try to search about uh, multi part, okay? Eh? <laughs> it doesn't give me any research. It's like, it, it is, it sucks so bad. It's like, so, and if you come over here, let's say I want to search for context API in React. It's like, how to use context? It's like, hey, here you can give that, this is really styled really correctly. This is really giving me a bunch of, so oh, this is really, they have really used a good uh, syntax highlighter as compared to your just own the documentation, which is not really good in my opinion. So if you come over here with, hey, they even give you the warning that this is a legacy API, use this new one. Do you have anything like that? No, there's nothing over here. So there is somewhere that I have really learned about Amazon's design philosophy. And I think that AWS hasn't really learned from it. So if you come over to this page, they clearly describe about what Amazon.com has made really successful. We, do, we know all that AWS, sorry, Amazon.com isn't really a good looking website, but what made, but what has made it really successful is the focus on simplicity of experience, the process and functionality. And I think AWS has forgot to put all of that essence in their own documentation. So if you come over here again, I would really like to give you an example of Chart.js. Let's take an example of, this is a front-end library of data visualization. Let's say if I want to go here, it gives me a sense about what I'm really, what I should be expecting and what I, what the result that I'll be getting here. So if I come back over here, I uh, let's say I've come over documentation. These are only within three step process. And somewhere down the line, I've heard that it's like whether it's, whether it's from Amazon or whether it's from someone else, that if your uh, if your task is within uh, if your task isn't being performed within three step, then there is something terrible in the design of a website, or there is something uh, there is something that needs to be fixed really urgently. Otherwise, it will really uh, it will not be the best user experience for the customers in turn, which will hamper the revenue of the company. So whether it's from Amazon or something else, I really don't know, but it's, it's really applicable over here. So if we come over here, let's try to really just uh, make this as a dark theme. And then let's say this is this code is so great that I can literally copy paste this one and use it in my own project, just ingesting the data from the API and it will just work flawlessly. And that's how the documentation should be. Do you have any code example? Do you have any like, like say like, hey, just make an e-commerce store, just store the object over here. I have found nothing. It's like, and there is one other stuff, like there is no clear mentioning of the limitation. Like what does this, uh, what does this uh, S3, uh, S3's limitations are? And here's the limitation lies about AWS. So if you come over to the AWS educate page, it's like they just have four or five minute videos, nothing else. It's like, so are you going to teach me within five? Are you going to teach me entire DynamoDB in just five minutes? Come on. Are you seriously joking on me? And when you just kind of really go on that. So for example, AWS cleans the DynamoDB is so great. You know, it can scale millions of times per second. It can handle uh, infinite number of uh, outbursts. So my question is great, but is it really that great enough as a developer? And the answer is no. Now, why is that? DynamoDB really forces you to do the things in its own way because, because the particles so or the partition size is just limited. You know, the scan operation is just limited. You don't have tons of flexibility as this, what MongoDB provides. You need to do, you need to just maintain and care about access pattern. Otherwise, it will burn your hole instantaneously and it will really just kind of not do the things. So if I really come from the background of Merlin stack, it's like which you might be really aware, then why, why don't you really just kind of give an uh, page, an article about, hey, this is our MongoDB, this is DynamoDB, and you need to adapt your workflow according to this pattern. Now, let's talk about reInvent. Reinvent is another type of bullshit. 
Why is that? Because AWS is not a marketing, sorry, AWS is not an education doc. AWS is complete marketing. I haven't seen any of the single video from AWS itself who really goes deep dive into about, who really goes into depth of any topic apart from theory because AWS videos in terms of theory, they are great. They are really phenomenal and I agree with it. But what do you have any code examples of the demonstration? Do you have any, like let's say, uh, do you have how to make APIs, how to really go on type of SDK? How deep do you go? And I really found only just a couple of them, which is not a really good idea. It's like, so it really feels that, you know, AWS services are more geared towards the people who are really seasoned and professional for five or five or 10 years. And I'm not really of them. It's like, I'm just, I'm college grad student right now. It's like, and if you can't make the service really easy, it's really gonna be a problematic for them. I agree that most of the, most of your revenue comes from the bigger company like Netflix, Adobe, like uh, Tinder, HTC, Grab, uh, Uber, Ola, and many others like and, and you do and you probably would care much about them rather than caring about us and this is really not a good thing because they people have a billions of billions of dollars in their cash reserve in the bank account that they can really hire top quality developers to really hey we have some problem let's call this guy let's he'll fix our problem but do we have anything like that because it's like your documentation really isn't really good enough it doesn't clear the expectation. The resources are sc scattered enough. So it's like the one thing is somewhere here and the another thing is somewhere there. Another thing is somewhere here and there is really not a mix match. So ultimately what I need to do is I need to rely upon the SEO of Google to really come to that, uh, to come over to that page or to rely upon Stack Overflow. It's like, and, and since because the documentation really sucks, so what ultimately is go, what ultimately is happening is the job which AWS needs to do instead of to fix this issue, other people's and the AWS heroes like Yan Kui, uh, Alex Debris are making their own blog posts and making and educating people about all of this minute detail and intricacies. It's like I really reached out to AWS support. You can see this uh, screenshot that hey. Your documentation sucks can you do about it and they say yeah we can really help you we are glad to help you and you can choose our premium plan so what indirectly you are saying is like honey give me money which just absolutely tempered me because it's like because there's such a small details and such a small problem can be instantaneously fixed heck aws really says that they have really like crazy analytic services they have machine learning they have recognition can't you really just use some analytics to really just improve the documentation? Maybe, maybe for AWS, it's really like, you know, we need to launch really a bunch of services. Like, hey, people will figure out on their own how to use that. You know, even though we don't really launch here, we don't have the much more in AWS SDK support. We don't really have all of this documentation correct. People will really pay us for all of this thing. And that attitude, I really don't like it. And I highly criticize about it. And this is something you need to do about it. Now, why am I really emphasizing on this thing? The fact is, if you really go on search amount of I, I got crazy, I got this amount of build by AWS. There are many blogs and Quora threads where you can see people are just freaking out that, hey, they got this much amount of bill, this much amount of bill that they haven't even really used. What has happened? It's like that it really clearly shows that there is something a need that people are really missing and AWS is not really communicating with them directly. But frankly, unfortunately, um, the AWS support team is kind enough to really wave off that charge. That means if customer is not paying for it, AWS has to pay it from their own pocket, which is not a good thing. And that thing can really pile up more instantaneously. And you can save that money. You can save that time effort by improving the documentation by educating the people, by clearing up the expectation by what it is, which I already stated previously. And let's talk about the pricing. Your pricing and billing structure absolutely makes no fucking sense. Why is that? Remember this guy, this guinea pig, I mean the Corey Queen, he had literally made his business out of explaining all of the AWS charges to all of his customers like Washington Post and many other stuff, many other 
comp companies out there and new york times literally made an article like how he makes fun of aws how he mocks them how he defends them and despite of all of these things like why do you why didn't you even fix all of that problem why you didn't really make and the another stupid thing that i've ever seen is the data transfer charges it's like now i'm i'm living in india i'm living in pune let's talk about jio and airtel within just 10 to 15 dollars i can i get 100 mbps unlimited unlimited without in data caps without in nothing and let's if india is cheap let's come to us itself there is company called utopia fiber which provides 10 gig unlimited 10 gbps unlimited connection within under 200 dollars and that is just freaking awesome like it blows my mind if you really connect your server and if you really connect that pipeline that uh, network internet pipeline you can literally serve millions of people and still your network do won't get congested that must that is that uh, amount of and capacity it does have and i really don't understand despite of having uh, these these isp giving us unlimited net unlimited broadband why can't they just say that hey we'll just charge you for this amount of money uh, we'll charge you let's say 10 dollars and we'll give you this much speed this much bandwidth and let's say okay we are really comfortable with that but instead aws wants to earn more money from you that's why and who doesn't really like free money and that is what the reason is they are recharging and this is the most i think you should do something about it to really just kind of reducing it and to and to really sum up all of that video is really what i really want to say is if you didn't really spend enough on educating people setting up the right expectation clearing all this nonsense the thing which you should really do but instead other people are doing it for you if that is what you want then all the best it's like what will really happen eventually is that even though azure sucks even though gcp is not really up to you but if they really spoke if they really spent heavily if they spent really much enough good about educating people educating college students about their services what will really happen is you will really lose market share quickly because people are well aware within just uh, within their services and they will really catch up really quickly and that what you need to be aware of so and if this video really makes sense i really want to reply from you aws because it's it's just too much and it you are making it too tough for a beginner to really just kind of use all of your services which i really like but your documentation and the learning services you need to seriously do something about it you need to at least invest 10 to 50 million dollars in it now who am i an average you to really tell you all of the all of that maybe a frustrated customer who is telling you what to really do some what can be done something correctly or something not the choice the decision is in your hand what you want to do is up to you till then stay connected stay subscribed make sure to share this video with every one of your developer out there till then i'll see you next time